God, a source of all light, by your word you give light to the soul. Pour out on us the spirit of wisdom and understanding that our hearts and minds may be opened. Amen. A few words can change the meaning of things. I have been known to misquote song lyrics. My friends laughed. <laughs> I will tell you that I misquote them a lot. Here are a few common ones I may or may not have misquoted. Elton John's hit, Hold Me Closer, Tony Danza. <laughs> the 1972 hit by Johnny Nash, I can see clearly now, Lorraine is gone. <laughs> The Fifth Dimension's 1969 hit Aquarius, Let the Sun Shine In. It is the dawning of the age of asparagus. <laughs> the age of asparagus. Asparagus. I have been known to replace pronouns from time to time when I sing our best churchy hymns, too. Great is my faithfulness instead of great is thy faithfulness. Some other good ones I've heard of, while shepherds washed their socks by night, <laughs> we three king, oh yes, we three kings of porridge and tar. A few words can really change the meaning of things. So a quick search found for some kid follies that I thought were applicable to us looking at the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who does art in heaven. Hollywood, be thy name. Thy kingdom come, my will be done. I heard it's in heaven. Forgive us our trash passes as we forgive those who passed trash against us. <coughs> Lead us not into Penn Station, but deliver us from email. For mine is the kingdom and the flower and the jewelry forever. Amen. Just a few words can really change the meaning of things. I offer this to make sure that you know that we don't have to take ourselves too seriously, but here we take God seriously. For today, we continue on our series on the Lord's Prayer, Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Today, we come to what might be thought of as a third petition centered on God. We could look at it as a hinge of this prayer. Today's focus remains on God and the earthly places for God to be at work. And after this, it sort of shifts to petitions for people. The remainder of the Lord's Prayer seems to center on human needs, right? For food, and forgiveness, and defense against temptation, deliverance from evil. Jesus wove all of these longings of the heart together in this prayer. So for this petition, let's think of it as in two parts. Thy will be done. And I want to be clear how dangerous it is to profess to know the will of God. But I think what we're really talking about is the amazing resilience of God's purposes in the world. God's intent for the world is not stumped by our plans. In fact, it was St. Augustine who said that our lives are like chicken, a chicken yard full of random tracks, chicken tracks in the mud going this way and that way, all in confusion. And seen through the eyes of faith, straining to see the purposes of God, our lives can take on a pattern, coherence or form. We discover certain design a direction as if led by some unseen hand. If that's the case, then we know that the writings from Paul, who says all things work together for good, for those who love God, who, care, who are called according to God's purpose. Your will be done on earth as in heaven is first a declaration of what God is doing before it implies anything about what we ought to do. When Martin Luther translated the Bible into German, the phrase he used was, your will appear as in heaven, so on earth. 
Here, the earnest longing for God's will to appear in our fullness before us, for God's dealings with the world to appear in convincing clarity and power. Perhaps one of the reasons why we gather together on Sunday and tell stories and pray and sing is that we might better perceive what is really going on in the world. Namely, that, that God is taking on the sins of the world and making meaning for it for good. To pray, your will be done, we are not asking that things come out right as we want them to come out, but rather to have our lives caught up with some project that is greater than ourselves. Namely, to get caught up in what God is doing in the world. Too often, I think we are conditioned to think of prayer, of this prayer, as asking God for what we want, right? Dear God, please give me this. Please give me that. Amen. But now, in praying that God's will be done on earth as it is in heaven, we are attempting to school ourselves to want what God wants, to receive, we receive, not what our hearts desire, but rather to become so enthralled with the vision of what God is doing in earth and on heaven that we forget the story that the world has told us, that we have nothing better to do than just to satisfy ourselves. So you may have an image in mind of what the world would look like to catch a glimpse of the kingdom of God, some heavenly space here. Well, the prophet Isaiah helps us do that. Many of the prophets do. The wolf will live with the lamb, the leopard will lie down with the young goat, a calf and the young lion will feed together, and a little child shall lead them. Or maybe the prophet Isaiah, uh, from the prophet Micah, they shall beat their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks, Nation shall not lift up sword against nation, neither shall they learn war no more. The second part, on earth as it is in heaven. The other portion of the petition this morning is something that we hear each time that we offer this petition. We ask for God, the God for our planet to become what God intends. We ask for God to show us what God intends for the world. And it's not some personal or private vision. It's a vision for the world, for the caretakers to care for all of God's creation. We are inviting God to give us a vision for a world as it should be. And then not only in prayer, but also in our work to help that vision come to reality. For us to see God at work in the world to be, to be brought a little bit closer together. So our work in the world and God's work in heaven to be brought a little closer together on earth as it is in heaven. In the way we live our lives and work for good in our communities, in our world, we are trying to close that space that the world, as the world has it, the world, what the world could be as the vision of God intends. So let's ask a question. Where does the world as it is not align with the world as it should be? Where does the world as it is not align with the world as it should be? It's a question that extends the phrase of this prayer to the larger cosmic scale, right? Racism and racial injustice global warming and environmental concerns, poverty and food insecurity, this part of the prayer, we pray thy kingdom come, thy will be. Every public policy decision, every social issue, every place where humans are suffering, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. <coughs> How do we look upon the news of the day and not believe that we are far from what God intends for the world and for human relationships? How can we not? The devastating famine in Somalia, the fresh images of war in Ukraine, gun violence on our streets, in our neighborhoods. 
But this prayer also allows us to see the power of the helpers, like chefs and volunteers from around the world helping in the surrounding countries around Ukraine for World Central Kitchen, for the power of those who remain in prayer each and every day. And one of the images that came to mind was prior to the Russian invasion in Ukraine a few weeks ago, where the people gathered two by two on their knees in the city parks, in the city squares, in the cities of Ukraine, praying together, praying for peace, for a better way, out in public, together, hand in hand, praying that the better way would be not the world as we see it, but for a world that God intends. So when a little girl, not yet five years old, lays her head down on her pillow, her mother invites her to join in a nightly prayer. The little girl begins, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy will be done. Now, much to the mother's surprise, her youngest has all of the words in her heart. And her mother doesn't remember teaching it to her specifically, but that saying this corporate prayer together out loud, together every week in a space like this, has helped imprint this prayer in her growing life. It's good to have this prayer Regardless of whether we can figure out what the will of God is today in this moment, it's good to have this prayer as part of our DNA. And to say it in whatever language you want, in whatever version is familiar to your heart, is a reminder of the power that we, the power of the things that we do repeatedly. And on the Sundays when I lead the Lord's Prayer, there's always this pause in my heart, when I begin our Father, and I pause just a little bit because I'm trusting and I'm knowing that all of you will join in with me. But just for a moment, there's a pause. And I think it's because I know that I don't want to say this prayer without you, that the prayers that we lift are magnified when we say them together. When we pray, I will be done, We offer ourselves to God to turn over all the things that we hold onto so tightly and that we feel like we have to control. We turn them over to God. On earth, as it is in heaven, we offer to help make this world the vision God has for us, even when we are stubborn and slow to catch a glimpse of it. Not my will be done. Not what I want, Lord, but what you want. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. When we pray this prayer, we are driven from our knees in prayer, back to our feet, to go out into the streets as agents of God's work to help fulfill that vision. Eugene Peterson, in the message, offers these words. Our Father in heaven, reveal who you are. Set the world right. Do what's best. As above, so below. May it be so.